I'm here to talk to you today in my blog about the top 10 ways you can hurt a BIM initiative in your firm. Another way to say that is the top 10 ways to derail your 5D BIM initiative. Number 10, assume it as simple as purchasing a copy of the software, giving it to a young engineer, and tell them to try it. The problem with this is that uh, the BIM process moves across multiple departments. And so, as you see here in the graph, departments, uh, as you move across departments, the degree of difficulty of change increases dramatically. So you really need to involve other departments in the, both the planning and the uh, actual operation of this. Number nine, hiring a good modeling person who has not had experience with some of these key skill sets. I would say that the three skill sets we see most often used in 5D BIM are someone who deeply understands constructability and coordination. So they've worked with subs before, they know how to read drawings, they are comfortable with a model, whether it's in a viewer or it's in a modeling system. Quantity takeoff, quantity surveys, and estimates or cost plans. So this is someone who understands classification systems knows how your company estimates, knows how they do it differently by stage, and understands that an estimate is not just merely quantities and pricings, but it's really a living document. And third, last but not least, is schedule planning and schedule production control. The first half of, of the schedule planning deals with creating a good schedule, uh, here shown in full line. The second part shows, uh, or is the skill, which allows you to take uh, the information you've created, go and work with the operations team, and be able to keep the project on track and anticipate problems, anticipate delays and claims, and uh, proactively fix them. Number eight, assume your project team will embrace new things without support, without adequate corporate planning and support. Some things, these bubbles over here are things to listen to, listen for, and they tell you, we've, we've put here some translations of what your people really need. If they say things like, we don't have enough time, they might begin to, they might be beginning to realize how much time uh, it will take to learn another system and to begin to integrate it into their daily operations. There's no consistent focus. They might say, well, um, we're getting mixed messages. We know what we told the owner. Uh, we know what we have to do typically in a project that is uh, most important in completing the project successfully. This seems to be a little bit at odds with this. So it's, it's time to sit down and talk about that. And something like the problems aren't fixed yet, it might mean that we haven't really looked at our process and identified our weakest spots, so we're not really ready to fix them. Number seven, pushing as much of the BIM requirements down to the subs as possible. And the problem with this really is that you're not controlling the quality of the effort if you're not on top of it. Common statements to watch out for from like a project engineer or project manager is the architects are doing the, uh, the model, the subs are going to do the MEP, FP models. We're all set. We've got our BIM done. We don't have to do anything. That is really um, a danger signal that you're not taking advantage of the information that's available to you and you're not leveraging this opportunity to learn more about the BIM process. Number six, not treating it as a strategic opportunity. The number one reason CEOs love BIM is winning more work. And, it, and learning how to uh, run a 5D BIM system as part of your standard uh, operating practice is the number one skill uh, of that owners are interested in. So if you're going to do BIM, you're going to probably be either build or, or get a model. That's like three quarters of the work. So why not take advantage of these other scheduling, cost planning, and other opportunities that are listed here in this table if you're already going to be doing all this work. If you can do all this, you are a strategic weapon for your company to go out and win work. And as a result, BIM, or 5D BIM, is a strategic weapon to differentiate your company from competitors.
Number five, don't invest any time with senior executives, explaining how things work, helping them to be able to talk about it both to your team, uh, other teams in the company who may need to support you, as well as to subs, partners, and the owner. If the senior executives are not comfortable talking about this, it's going to be very difficult for this to grow as a core competence in your company. So I've listed some key elements that we, we work through with our uh, customers, and uh, these are kind of the top ten of those uh, in, our, in our partnering guide. So they include things like learning about the business goals, making sure we have the proper team set up. I'm going to talk some more about this later. You can read these ten, but these are important. Number four, assume you have a database that contains all the information ready to use. The truth often is that your really skilled estimators have things in many places. They have a lot of information in their head. They have a lot of information typically in uh, older project files, whether those are in Excel or in a system. Uh, but it's often that they will pull some of the information from their head some of the information from some of their trusted partners, and then some of the information from other places, systems, uh, or other projects. And so uh, typically when a BIM team is going to engage on a, pro a project, it's most helpful for them if all this information is collated. So don't assume that it is. And if you want to learn some more about that, we'd be happy to talk with you about it. Number three, um, often something I hear is, uh, well, we'll use this BIM stuff as long as we don't have to change. And, you know, limiting change uh, to be more effective is probably a bad idea. And that's the point of this cartoon here. You see the salesman is trying to sell the king a machine gun, and uh, he's going to go out with his sword to do battle because he doesn't have time to learn about a new technology or a new tool. So the idea here is Stop and take a look at how effective things can be. Take a little time, set up a team, and if you look at all the other items, you know that planning your work and working your plan is going to be very important. Number two, uh, number two is derailing your plan by not writing it down. So here's just an example, sample project framework. This is from a development handbook. Uh, this is available on the web. There are many other ways to document. But essentially, this is creating a project, a project charter, monitoring the work. This is very, very important, writing things down. And of course, the number one thing that you could do to derail your ability to succeed using 5D BIM is assume it's just clash detection and that you don't have to learn anymore. Um, those of you who have recently been at the AGC in Kansas City, will know that there were some very, very progressive presentations done by, by regular contractors and uh, showed that they have a great deal of skill in this area. And all of these things are possible today with the BIM systems that are available to owners, construction managers, general contractors, and subs. So you may not want to do all this at once. You may not be able to do all of this at once. But you should have a plan to move through all this figure out what is most important for your team because many other companies are doing all this. That's all I have for today. I hope you've enjoyed this video blog and uh, we'll be following up with some additional information on this in one of our next postings. Thanks a lot. Have a great afternoon.